Alright guys, tonight uh, I'll be doing a review on the Dayton Audio MK402 bookshelf speakers. And I have a couple of guests because mom is cleaning their, or my wife is cleaning their cage. Uh, this is Mocha, one of my two pounders. He's a big guy. Uh, he's pretty old, he's over two, had surgery, but he's a big guy. Get in there. And this is Fenris, he's my troublemaker. Yep. Anyway, give them their cookie so they'll chill out. Ooh, there you go. You want some cookie, Finn? Finn, you want some cookie? There you go. There you go. Here, have a whole bunch of cookie. So they will do their thing while I do my thing. Anyway, Dayton Audio MK402. Now, these are a smaller... Uh, more of a compact bookshelf speaker so they're gonna fall in that size range more of the like the R Micah RB42, the NHT Super Zeros uh, possibly even probably in the same class as like the Micah MB42X because these do have a crossover and then the sad thing is they don't actually make these anymore they only make the powered version of these still which would be the M4, 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 uh, was it M402X or something like that? Still available for less than a hundred bucks. I think when these were new, they're around seventy bucks. Were uh, their closest competitor being the Micah MB42X has now gone up to ninety bucks at the current time. It could jump around, might go back down, might come back up. Who knows? Um, anyway. Unfortunately, they don't uh, make these anymore. Maybe they'll come back. Maybe they won't. Um, but I'm going to review them anyway because I'm sure some of them will turn up on eBay or other stores used, and people will buy them and want to know about them. We, you know, we. I don't only Finn. I don't only review new things because people don't only buy new things. Mocha, stay on top. And uh, anyway, Finn, get back in there. Um, Anyway, 4-inch, really girthy, meaty 4-inch woofer, a lot like the uh, Micah RB42s, and then um, a 3-quarter inch soft dome tweeter. A lot of the drivers in the, these are very similar to drivers that Micah uses, so, you know. And then you have a port on the back and some, uh, as I always complain, Five-way binding posts, but they're really shallow, cheap binding posts. But um, you could argue better than spring clips, I suppose. And then on the back here, there's your model number, 5 to 40 watts, recommended 4 ohm, which is fine for like 99% of amplifiers out there. And then your frequency response of 60 to 20 kilohertz, which is uh, very respectable for a driver or speaker of this size. Mocha, you just got to make a mess, don't you? You're a big fat pig. Eat your cookie. Anyway, we'll grab the grills. Uh, pretty standard. Uh, I like it when they do it this way. It seems cheap, but it's to me it's not. When they take a piece of MDF and just cut it out, stretch fabric over it, because it actually is way more rigid than those stupid little plastic frame Um grills that and these if the fabric is to ever go bad it's easy to cut this off stretch new fabric over it and re-glue it or staple it if you have to um, most people aren't going to worry about that but it is a thing for me because I as someone that restores speakers I find myself repairing grills a lot because grills seem to get beat up and then uh, a nice little cast aluminum Dayton Audio badge at the bottom which is a nice touch and a little bit different speaker pegs are these kind of these long skinny uh, plastic. Uh, I honestly can't. Eh, they're probably a hard plastic. And then you got these really small peg holes. And I actually quite like them. They're better than the old ball and socket plastic rubber ones. They actually fit on there really snug. Works great. Okie dokie. And then they have these. Uh, chamfers around the edge that are somewhat for aesthetics up here around the tweeter it may be somewhat helping with front baffle diffraction 
by or edge diffraction by having that chamfer there. Um, whether you'll hear the difference, I don't know. Anyway, oh, and these rubber feet, I believe, do come in the box. I don't think I put those on there. I don't remember 100% because I had these like two years ago or a year and a half ago or something. I had them for a while. And then uh, a friend of mine was putting together a cheap home theater and needed some rear speakers. So I sold them to him. And then a year went by and he still hadn't done anything with all the stuff he had piled in his basement. And then he ended up getting a good deal and on a whole speaker receiver set. And so I bought these back from him for the same thing I sold them to just so I could do a review on them. And then probably sell them again. Uh, I would keep them, but I just don't have any use for them. Um, I'm not going to talk about any of the sound or anything, and this is just like the physical review where we put our hands on them, take them apart, touch them, talk them about the parts, and then there'll be another part later where we actually hook them up and listen to them and talk about the sound signature. Anyway, so moving on, I'm going to pull the drivers out and we're going to have a look inside. Okay, now... I have not taken these apart. I know they have a crossover in them. Uh, the specs say they have a uh, third, uh, 18 dB proactive third order crossover on the tweeter and a second order or 12 decibel proactive on the woofer, which is great for a speaker of this price. And well, it's not unheard of. A lot, uh, a lot more speakers are coming with better crossovers nowadays. I think just as technology gets more readily available and cheaper. And it's not like compared to the circuitry in this phone that I'm recording with crossovers are quite basic. Um, they shouldn't really be expensive or anything uh, too complicated to make. Holy cow. Finn, get out from under there. Just stay on top of the bedding. You too, Mocha. Come on now. Come on, guys. You're fine. They're just being pouty because they're Got woke up and taken out of their cage. Anyway, a very girthy, meaty, uh, let's see if I can get it to unconnect here, four inch woofer, like the Mica RB42 had. Very meaty woofer. A uh, vented pole piece, large magnet, typical stamp steel basket, which you're going to find on any mass produced speaker. It's nice that it's it is, obviously is going to be a Dayton Audio speaker. Dayton Audio makes lots of speakers, not just for their own speakers. They make speakers. Um, so other companies come to them, hear some specs, make the speaker for us. Um, kind of like a, what, Peerless. I think Peerless is another one that makes a lot of speakers. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, four ohm driver. There's your model number. Um, I think you can actually buy this speaker or driver on PartsExpress.com. But anyway, very nice, meaty 4-inch woofer. Good quality. And I think this tweeter is in the same boat. Oh, those are... Oh, I see. They're the locking. Anyway, this a tweeter, I believe, is also available on uh, Parts Express as well. Dayton model right there and it's kind of nice Dayton uses their own drivers I wouldn't be surprised if the drivers in a lot of micro speakers are made by Dayton it's a possibility maybe not they just look an awful lot alike but a little three quarter inch soft dome tweeter um, you can almost see my reflection out there yeah very small not a lot goes into these um, yeah there's many different designs for tweeters, so just because it's tiny like this doesn't mean it's going to sound bad. It may have more to do with its power handling, but anyway. Uh, pretty small wire on the tweeter, which is probably fine. A little bit larger wire on the on the woofer, which is good. Or it seems larger, maybe it's not. Uh, nice foam gasket on the woofer. The foam gasket on the Micro RB42 was garbage. It didn't even seat properly. These gaskets look like they actually seat well in their place. Ooh, one, okay, let's see here. How's that done in there? Oh, I see, it's hooked on the tweeter wire. No biggie, you get a big old piece of damping foam in there. You guys, I put down the soft bedding for you and then you just try to get under it. Come on, just lay there, jeez, big chickens. Anyway. 
let's see if we can look on the inside here. Crossover is attached to the rear terminal cup, so we'll pull that out. All right. There we go. All right, there's a crossover. Uh, looks like all the components are on the top side here. Uh, I'm going to guess an iron core inductor for the woofer. And I'm not seeing any compart components on the back side. I don't. I'm pretty sure they stated a third order on the tweeter and a second order on the woofer. And. And I'm not a crossover professional, but I don't, I'm not seeing enough components here to make that caliber of a crossover. Because most likely, wait a minute, there's not even an inductor for the tweeter. Is there another crossover in here somewhere? Unless it's a first order on the woofer where they just have a cap on it and then a third order inductor cap. I'm assuming the resistor though, this is it's a five watt. I wish I knew what the uh, resistance on it because I'm gonna guess this resistor is to help balance out as like an L-pad with the tweeter or with the woofer because the tweeter is probably a lot more efficient than the woofer. I'm going to guess this is probably like a 92 dB per 1 watt. And this is probably uh, maybe 83 or 84 dB per 1 watt. So the tweeter becomes is a lot more efficient. So it's going to play louder with the same amount of power. So to get them more balanced, you have to put an L-pad uh, on the tweeter to kind of bring its sensitivity down so otherwise it's just going to be way louder than the woofer and it's going to be very unbalanced so i'd assume maybe maybe this resistor is some sort of l pad to kind of calm the tweeter down to match the woofer but then again because there's no components on the back side i all i could guess is maybe there's a second order on the tweeter and a first order on the woofer i don't know again i mean you can throw your guesses in the comments but I'm pretty sure they said third order on the tweeter and second order on the woofer. That's, that can't be. There's not enough components here. And there's no more components in the box. No secondary crossovers or nothing. It is a nice box. It looks like the front is three quarter maybe. Where's my tape measure? Nope, front's half. I'm going to guess it's probably all half inch thick. But as you can see, there is some bracing inside there, which is nice. These would probably be the oh, these would be the first speakers I've seen that actually have any kind of uh, bracing on the inside. Um, there's even a brace across the top up there, and there you can see the port. Uh, the inside of the port in here is not flared, which would probably help with the amount of excursion and air this uh, porn driver is able to move. There. Whoops. Anyway, um, it would have taken less wood to just run some braces across from wall to wall in here. Um, I guess this is still a form of bracing, but they still should have ran a brace uh, side to side in here, you know, going from wall to wall. Uh, seems very solid though for a small enclosure. So, eh, kudos for the bracing at least. I've seen much worse on more expensive speakers. So, anyway, that's what you get. Um, unfortunately, like I said, they're not available anymore. I'm not sure why. It could be because of COVID reasons and shipping and manufacturing to do with China. And, um, I don't know, or maybe just lack of sales or something. They're trying to, you know, only uh, make their best-selling products or something. Uh, but who knows if you see a pair on eBay or something or on another website that's got leftover stock of them here's your review I'm going to get them put back together we'll get them hooked up and we'll play some music on them maybe compare them against something so hang on
Okay, <clears throat> we're all set up for the demonstration. So this is going to be a, a, a real basic demonstration because, like I've said in almost every video, I'm not going to play a whole bunch of these high uh, resolution or detail songs because a lot of it's not going to translate through YouTube anyway. So um, I'm going to compare them because this their sound signature. I'm going to compare them to the Sony CS5 again. Um, and you'll hear the difference. That's the main reason is there's a big difference and you'll notice it. Um, so we'll just go through a couple different songs and I'll, uh, you'll know when the Sony's are on because they're not only louder just because they're, um, they're more efficient. Um, they have, they're just, they just sound much bigger and, and it, you know, about every way. So you'll know when they're on. Um, so we'll run through a few here. It'll be, we'll be starting with the Sony's on. And then I'll, you know, I'll switch back and forth. And like I said, you'll know when the Sony's on because they're much louder. Uh, but they're more than just louder. So here we go. I'll switch to the Dayton's. Back to the Sony's. And back to the Dayton's. Back to the Sony's. The Dayton's. Oops. Now to the Dayton's. We'll push the wrong button. Back to the Sony's. Dayton's. Back to the Sony's. Let's see if we can hear the difference in the piano. Probably not quite as much because it's more subtle. This is the Sony's right now. Dayton's. Back to the Sony's. on the Sony's. Let's switch to the Dayton's. Back to the Sony's. Okay, 
I'm not going to play songs for 15, 20 minutes. There's no really, no point. Um, a lot to go over here. First thing we're going to go over is the uh, crossovers I was talking about in the earlier part of this video. Um, <clears throat> I had stated that um, from Parts Express where I bought them, they showed in the uh, you know the specifications that they had a second order and a second order on the woofer and a third order on the tweeter, which is be really good crossover. That's I mean. Um, higher order doesn't always necessarily mean better. It's more about what the speaker needs, but um, a lot of times it does show that they've uh, engineered something. Um, but when looking at the crossover after I pulled it out, there's not enough components there to have a second order on the woofer and a third order on the tweeter. Uh, I, like I said, I'm not a crossover electrical engineer, technician, or whatever, but I've built about 20 or 30 crossovers in my 20 years of DIYing speakers, and have that order of crossover, you need several more components to get there. Um, I believe that crossover only had, what, four, four or five components. So I went over to uh, Dayton's website, the actual company that makes them, Parts Express and Dayton are like, yeah. They're not the same thing, but they're partners, I guess. Um, on Dayton's website, however, it says something else. On Dayton's website, it says they have a first order on the woofer and a second order on the tweeter. And that makes more sense. So it is... <clears throat> I don't want to say lower grade crossover, because when they were engineering these, maybe that's all they needed to get what they wanted, uh, if they had a target with these that they were trying to achieve. Um, like I said, you don't, just cause something has a much higher order, much more complicated crossover doesn't necessarily mean it's better. Um, so maybe they were able to achieve what they wanted with less components, which is good cause it saves them money. Um, not to say that it couldn't have been made better with more components than, uh, I mean, they're already only 84 dB per one watt, which is pretty low sensitivity, so they're gonna take, they're gonna be like the RB42. A lot of these speakers that have small drivers are gonna take more power. They're not gonna be efficient because they're small diaphragm, so they're not gonna move much air. Um, so to get them loud, they're gonna take more power. Um, but, uh, uh, where was I? I got off on a tangent, anyway. More components, higher order crossover doesn't necessarily always mean better, so whatever. Um, the two, Parts Express uh, just needs to update their, if they're listening to this, you need to update your, well, you don't need to because you don't sell the speakers anymore. Um, still, the two sites, that's out of all the information, that's the only thing that's different is where they talk about the orders of the crossover. Now, going back over everything else, four inch high excursion woofer, yes, three quarter or three fourth. Uh, inch soft dome 40 watts RMS 80 watts max 4 ohm impedance um, response they are supposedly 60 hertz to 20 kilohertz 84 dB 1 watt per 1 meter and crossover which we'll be getting back to again is set at tw uh, 2.5 or 2500 hertz uh, and then again yes, yeah, this is first order on the woofer second order on the tweeter which makes sense and then port tune to 50 hertz, which I believe it. Um, now, as you could probably hear the difference between these and the Sony's, as soon as I switched to these, the seemed like the, the sound stage, the dynamic, the just the body of the music kind of just, just disappeared. It's almost like you shut one of the speakers off or something. Or uh, It's a dramatic change. And yes, the Sony's are bigger, these uh, MK402s are a pretty small, compact um, bookshelf speaker, so I don't expect them to obviously have the efficiency of the Sony's, but the uh, that lack in body, what it is, is lack in mid bass and mid range is just not there. And some people may like that sound signature, um, but. <laughs> To the degree that these do it, you're actually starting to lose out on some of your musicality or detail, whatever you want to call it. And uh, 
the Sirwin Vega SL5s that I tested had a similar problem where they just had this big dip in the middle. Um, and it, if, it does kind of create this somewhat of a smiley faced EQ again where the bass, it, it helps emphasize the bass in the tweeter. So it makes the tweeter seem more, uh, have more clarity and more sparkle and might make the woofer seem a little, you know, deeper and more noticeable um, through that. And our human human ears are more um, sensitive to mid-range frequencies. But it's, for me, it's a bad thing because I don't necessarily like it. That, that difference between the, I always use the Sonys because the, one thing that Sony seemed to get right with the CS5s is they were able to get decent bass out of them and good highs out of them. And what makes them so noticeable is they get really good mid bass and mid range out of them without them getting just noisy and shouty. And uh, a lot of speakers that have that have uh, the mid bass and uh, mid range uh, pushed up and stuff, they tend to kind of just get loud and shouty and they're they kind of lose their detail and they're just not always pleasant to listen to um i think that's kind of the magic with the cs5s is they i've measured them they're pretty flat but for some reason the mid-range mid bass on them is uh not held back it's you know it's definitely there it's very uh, noticeable but yet it's not overwhelming um, they just have really good mid bass and mid range, which makes them seem much bigger and much more dynamic than you would think. And then you know, like when I switch back to these little Daytons, that it's just like this whole section just disappears. And it's that mid bass, mid range section. And like I said, some people might like that. Um, everybody's ears are a little bit different, um, and you could tune for it a little bit if you got an EQ. You could. Uh, bump up a little bit here uh, I measured them I just did a quick room measurement this is not perfect um, let me pull up rue here okay we'll we'll pan you up here I don't know if it'll show up let's see if we can zoom in on TV can we get that line to show up yeah that is just a quick room measurement and you can see if I get the mouse to Right here in this area where I have the cross here, that's that dip. That's right around 2,500 to 3,500 hertz. That's going to be where it's crossed over. That first order on the woofer is going to have a long, stretched out six decibel per octave. So that the woofer is going to probably carry out to probably almost 3,000 hertz before it really starts to get below three or six dB before you can't really hear it anymore. And the tweeter being a second order is going to be a 12 decibel per octave. That's why the slope here after, this is a tweeter coming back up, is a little steeper than the woofer. The woofer is a lot more drug out. Um, and this is not going to depict it exactly because rooms aren't perfect. And But anyway, you can kind of see it. And uh, it's funny because I did look. You can buy the tweeter and the woofer on Parts Express, they're for sale. The tweeter is eight dollars, and the woofer is six dollars. <laughs> so they're very affordable drivers. Um, the tweeter, though, it's interesting. The tweeter, Dayton themselves only recommend it down to three thousand hertz, and the woofer is rated up to five thousand. So I'm not sure why they crossed it at twenty five hundred, because now they're stretching kind of below where the tweeter should be going. The tweeter should be kept above three thousand. And the woof, see, and the woofer's got room, really up to four or five thousand. So I think they should have crossed them. And maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I haven't put all the numbers in Bass Box and X Over Pro and mashed it out. But these possibly may have been better crossed at like 3,500 hertz instead of 2,500 hertz. And you could have that would have had the woofers might have got a little more uh, range or body out of the woofers. So I think part of the problem is that that dip you're seeing there is the tweeter not wanting to go that low, possibly. Uh, the tweeter, um, it has a, a FS all the way down to 1600 hertz, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to get down there. I'd have to pull the tweeters out and hook them up to my dad's V3 and, 
do all this work and actually try and figure out how low they can actually go. But for the manufacturer themselves rates them from 3,000 to 20,000 hertz. So I'm kind of surprised they kind of broke their own rule. I think the tweeters really having to reach pretty deep to reach out and grab the woofer. So I think they should have crossed them even at 3,000. 3,000 or 3,500, and that might have helped fix that hole. Um, I'm still debating whether I want to mess with it or not because um, I'm going to spend it's going to eat up a lot of time. And if I got to change the crossovers and stuff, and then I got to order stuff and money. And then when I turn around and go to sell them, nobody's going to want to give me hardly any money for them because nobody cares. So um, if you have a set of these or you find a set on eBay for cheap, um, this is going to tie into the summary a bit, but I would. And you need a small speaker. You need a small bookshelf speaker. That's the thing. Um, they're a good option. Um, they're much cheaper than the RB42. And I don't think the RB, the mic RB42s really sound a whole lot better than these. The tweeters almost sound identical. They're very, uh, they have a lot of clarity. Um, they're, you know, airy and quiet songs. You can, you know, you can hear the, you know, the female or male vocals, lips and breath. You know, it's, it's there. Um, the only thing about the tweeters is even though they are have great detail and clarity, they they just sound small. And the Mike RB42 tweeters were kind of the same way. They Excellent clarity and everything. Great detail, but uh, crash of a cymbal or certain things like that, they just kind of sound like small tweeters. Compared to like a like the Sonys have one-inch tweeters, and I have some other speakers that have one and an eighth uh and even the VIFA dual concentric dome tweeters um, just have a much larger voice, uh, especially when you get that crash and de uh, decay of cymbals and stuff like that. So they, the tweeters sound great, but they do sound kind of small. The woofers sound great. They woof. They're not really muddy. They are lacking in mid-bass. Um, and it's part of it, as you can see, and it, some of it's probably my room, every, and that's the thing. The odds of these sounding the same in everybody's room is almost next to none because everybody's room is going to be different. So your room, I have a lot of damping and acoustic treatment in my room. If you don't, it's going to cause all different kinds of other effects, uh, but I have to deal with what I, you know, the room I have. And you can even see on the graph right around 100 hertz they jump up a lot in my space all the way to about 300 almost to 300 hertz and then they come back down you know a couple a couple decibel jump there so and then they really pick up about in my space eh, right about 45 50 hertz with what they said it was port tuned to 50 so fine um, and then, yeah, at 100, they really jump up. And then they come back down at 300, and from 300 all the way to about 1,500, they're pretty pretty even. And then they got that just that big hole where the crossover is, and then they come right back up. Um, so, And just like the Sirwin Vegas and stuff, I could, uh, I have, a, you know, since I have a mini DSP, um, I have multiple ways I could pan this out and get this, response flattened out for my room and it might make them sound better um, but I can't go based on that because not everybody has that ability most people are just going to bring these things home hook them up and listen to music on them so and depending on your room like I said some people might have a better response in their room although I don't think it's going to the uh, the dip where the crossover is I don't think your room's going to change that much but some of these other parts here on this end with the bass depending on how close you put them to the wall and stuff, this might change. But So yeah, would I buy them? If you can find them cheap enough, 50 bucks, 50, 60 bucks used in good shape, sure. Uh, they'd still make really good rears. They'd make good speakers for a small room, a dorm or a very small bedroom or something where, you know, space is of the uh, importance. But like a lot of other speakers and even like the NHTs and the Mic RB42s, if you really don't need a compact bookshelf speaker, um, then I can't really recommend them. Let me back out here. 
yeah, if you got a, a little more room, you know, just go with, like, I, again, I have to recommend the Sony CS5 because everything I've tested them against, the only thing that really, that's still available that comes close is probably the Pioneer BS22s. I don't know if I mentioned um, these ones, the passive version of these is not available anymore, but they still, I think the MK402X, which is a powered version of them, um, is still available on Parts Express for, I want to say, 80 or 90 bucks, maybe 100, somewhere around there. I paid 80. I think I paid 79.99 for these like a year or so ago, um, which now would be too much. If these were still around, 79.99 would be too much. I wouldn't pay that for them. Um, probably maybe at most 59.99. It's uh, they they get your attention because of the meaty, uh, you know, long throw woofer and a nice little tweeter. They really look the part for a nice little speaker, but I don't, they just don't, I don't think they deliver at you know, 80 bucks. Um, MS, original MSRP, I think is 120, so that's a definite no. Because um, the Sonys and a handful of these other bookshelf speakers that are a little bit bigger than these um, usually float somewhere around 100 bucks and they're a better option. So, uh, I think that's going to be it. Yeah, if you come across a set of these used, and they fit your bill. Uh, you need some rear speakers or some small office speakers or something. 50, 60 bucks tops. No more than that. Um, otherwise, I'd look somewhere else. Um, I think that's going to be it. All right. Uh, comments down below like usual. Uh, questions, whatever. I'll have them for a little while. I'm going to ponder on whether I want to mess with the crossovers or not. Because I spent a lot of time messing with the B652s and B652 Airs. And... After the time and little bit of money I spent on them, it's literally just easier to go buy some Sony CS5s <laughs> instead of mess with those, unless you want something to mess with. Um, so, yeah, all right. Good night, guys.